Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Kime Report. Wherever you get your podcast, you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in and you can always read my work on ESPN.com and you can go find out for daily camp reports from every team on ESPN.com. In a few minutes, I'll be joined by former Washington Redskins corner Fred Smoot as we break down what's going on at training camp. And I even ask him, with all this stuff with Ron Rivera, Eric bien all the comments, was it a big deal? He, Fred also played for a very demanding coach in Greg Williams and even Marty Schottenheimer, so he can relate to some of what these guys might be going through as they adjust to a coach that's more demanding. Anyway, we'll get to all that, but we also talk about on-the-field stuff because I don't want to limit it just to that topic because I know you don't want to hear just about that, and I don't want to just talk about that. So, But it does have to be addressed because I'm curious, right? You know, Is it a big deal? Is it not? I ask, he answers, we go on. Anyway, I'll get to some of that, more of that in a minute, but just a couple programming notes. I will have a podcast after the preseason game, but it may not come out until Saturday morning, so just be aware of that. Probably, and it would be early Saturday morning. Want a good conversation with someone, so we're going to have that probably Saturday morning because it gets pretty crazy after some of those night games and et cetera. So just easier to do it there. Anyway, so look for it then. I will have another podcast out on Thursday, leading or for Thursday and Friday, leading into the game with Matthew Paris from the Washington Times, Sam Fortier from the Washington Post, and Pete Haley, formerly of NBC Sports Washington. Just a little roundtable discussion about what we've seen in camp, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And a little bit about the, the Browns game. What do you, what do they want to see in that game? So, and all, again, all we know is that Sam Howell is going to start. We don't know how much the stars are going to play. So uh, a couple of things, what happened out at commander's practice today? Anyway, didn't see a lot of it because I had to write. Also, the big thing out there was Maryland governor Wes Moore was out there. Limited partner Mitchell Rails was at practice today. And then there were there was a Virginia delegate out there. And so a lot of stadium stuff going to get going on here, folks. I will say that uh, Wes Moore made a strong pitch for PG County, as which is what he's supposed to do. This is going to go on for at least a year, I'm guessing. And it may go on for two years before they find their place. They, The Harris group understands that this stadium is a big part of their legacy. And these, these are people who are ultra, ultra, ultra detailed with with decisions like this, I do not expect them to rush into one. And keep in mind that you, they, the franchise has been looking for one for a while. This group is not, so it's going to take some time there. So, anyway, the other thing that was going on at Red, excuse me, Redskin Park at Commanders Park today was Ron Rivera talking about his comments about the Eric Bieniemy situation, or not his situation, but just that whole thing, whatever you want to call it. So he came out today, read a prepared statement about what he was trying to convey with what he was saying. And even asked, you know, I had people call me and say, why would he go out and say something like that publicly? That's something you keep in house. So I asked him, why did you feel compelled to do that? So for him, what he was saying is that what he said is that he wanted to show where this team was even just a week ago, because those meetings, those meetings with Benjamin took place about a week or so ago. And so where they were then, then you take it to this week, where they had some of their best practices. And even Rivera said that he had talked to the enemy after practice on Tuesday and let him know that he thought that was their best offensive practice and that he felt like the guys were buying in to what he was, what he was doing and what he, how he, how he was doing things. So that's what he said he was trying to convey that they were here and now they're here and they're buying in and that's a good thing. Right? So that, that I, this is, this is what he said. And then he was at, and he even said he told the enemy that he put his foot in his mouth and that he sometimes does that. And he did it. He felt like he did it here. Wasn't as clear as he wanted to be. And then he was asked about the comments about, you know, him and Del Rio having been head coaches and the enemy not. And maybe, you know, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, maybe do you have to take your foot off the pedal a little bit as a head coach? And one thing that, that, that Rivera said when asked about that was that he had played for Buddy Ryan for two years, played for Mike Ditka for two years guys who really did let their foot off the pedal. So his point was there are different ways to do things and you do what works for you. That's what the enemy's always done. And it's what he's going to always do. So we move on. Now, here's my conversation with former Washington corner, Fred Smoot. 
School is out and summer is here, so it's time to plan your next family adventure. With eight different levels, 16 courses, 250 climbing obstacles, and over 4,000 feet of zip lines, the Adventure Park at Sandy Spring, located in Montgomery County, Maryland, is the largest ropes course and zip line park in the country. Beat the heat and join us after dark for some night climbing. When the sun goes down, the park is lit up, allowing you to climb under the stars. Check out their glow in the park events for extra glow lights and music throughout the forest. Want to keep your feet on the ground? Grab a bite to eat from the food truck and give axe throwing a try. Perfect for first timers or experts, their projector systems allow you to throw at traditional targets, play tic-tac-toe, connect four, or even hunt zombies. Listeners of this show can get $5 off any ticket by entering the code KIME23DC at checkout. That's promo code KIME23DC, K-E-I-M-23-D-C. Now open seven days a week. This is the perfect time of year to get outside and join the adventure at theadventurepark.com. But Fred, a little bit of a different last couple of days out at the commander's facility and yeah. on had some comments about Eric the enemy. And I, first of all, I want to start in general, your perspective, you played the game, you played for demanding coach and Greg Williams. Was this, was this a big deal? How'd you, how'd you process it? Not, not a big deal at all. At the end of the day, the, I think the guys got to go through a gesting period. They got to adjust to the way he coached. They got to adjust to the things that he demand, and they gonna have to want to do it. Like, uh, like, like coaches say, I don't need to make you want to football. Football is what you do. All right, so you should be able to do it 24-7. I enjoyed the way Greg pushed us. I enjoyed the way Greg held us accountable. I enjoyed the way Greg laid it out there and was very truthful. And he used to chew into us. But after a while, we just got so used to it, so callous to it, and understood that was his tempo. That's the way he does things. Now that's the way we do things. All right, so I had to go through a gesture period, but I I had one of them people personally Personally, I respond well to hard coaching. You know, I, it's, it's like hard parenting. I, I did teacher that was that mean teacher. You don't respect her and love her until you made some of yourself. And you know that hard teaching is the reason why you are what it is. So I don't think it's a big deal. I, I, I just wonder who that player is that went to him and said it. But other than that, at the end of the day, you, everything's different. They're going to have to adjust and they're going to have to learn the tempo that he likes the stuff to be done. Were you surprised that Ron would talk about it? Yeah, I am. And, and, I, and I see he, uh, you know, apologized about it and said, you know, he probably shouldn't have said anything about it. And I just think Coach just, he one of them guys, you ask him a question, he's going to give you the truth. All right? And sometimes that he could be too truthful. And I think that's really what happened on there when they asked him the question. He told him what happened. And, and he didn't think it was a big deal because no, he, he ain't thinking like that. Because he in his head, he's saying, I'm going to let him coach this offense like he wants to coach this offense. All right? But I did have a couple of players coming to me and nag about uh, how hard it was. And I'm sure it was more of him saying, I'm glad it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, no problem with that. But like I said, more more thing where it was it was a lot of honesty over there. So again, with Greg, with Greg Williams, when you played yeah. for him, and yeah. I covered him, like I know I, Greg, Greg, Greg liked to not only be tough, but tell you how tough he was as a coach. So how yeah. what in in do you remember like who had a hard time with him? Were there, were there a few guys? Cause like you guys used to do gassers before practice for God. Before practice, because he yeah. said something that really made sense. And something that I was used to was you play the game tired. All right. So we're going to start off by wearing you out. All right. So when we, as we go, you start to understand how to play under those conditions. And so therefore we were, we were in the best condition of our lives and we did have an offense that didn't get did a lot of touchdowns. So we had to play 80 snaps a game. So we was ready for that. But a lot of guys didn't really, how should I say, I wouldn't say respond well to it. It was adjustment period. Uh, even, and I think the one thing about Greg, he challenged you physically, but he really challenged you mentally. Like that was his thing. He he's the Ivy League guy. He likes to tell you that constantly. So at the end of the day, 
He's going to challenge you mentally and physically. And like I think LeBar had an adjustment period, Everton dealing with that situation. Uh, some of the D line is most definitely because he expected the D tackles to run like the linebackers. That's just what he played. And that's why a guy like Lorenzo Alexander can make his defense and other guys couldn't because he liked his guys to be fit and he liked his guys to be able to run. So I just think he had he had the five to our feet and he made us understand quickly. We're not only going to be in shape, we're going to be very physical, and we're going to be one of the smartest defenses in the uh, in the league. And I think that's what Coach B. Enemy is trying to set the foundation for right now. We're going to practice at a high tempo. We're going to put in 100 plays a day, and we're going to, we're going to outlast everybody. And I think that's what he's trying to instill in these guys. Well, there's two things. One, you talk about Greg with the Ivy League. We always joke yeah. the second G was for genius and his first name. <laughs> yes. Because, because he, he, he's smart. But the other thing yeah. is with the other thing is funny because when you're talking about this, it's almost like the enemy almost coaches like defensive guys would probably love him. Yes, yes, he's like, got, he coaches with almost like that kind of mentality, that intensity yeah. and that passion. That what defense players love and being demanded things like you point us in the right direction and these when dogs are hunt. Like that's what we like to do. So yeah, we would embrace it. Think about it. The one thing we do is we run all day on defense. Like we run all day long. So being in shape, being pushed to the max, that's what we do. And you know, sometimes on offense kind, you know, that the offensive player can be a little divas. They they the divas <laughs> after butt. All right. So you know, it's, it's sometimes a little individuality over there when mostly on defense is the us mentality. And now that I think about it, maybe Coach B enemy is the offensive Greg Williams right now. I mean, and I think there's a, but like, I've enjoyed watching him. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I mean, like what, when you watch him, what, like, what is it, what gets you going? Like, what is it that you like when you watch him? Every play. He's looking for assignment, yeah. he's looking for detail, and he's looking for effort. Every play, he's getting on somebody about finishing, letting you know that every play count, every snap count, everything that you do affects how the overall game. He is he's he's crossing those T's and he dotting those I's and he's making them understand that. See, it's easy for a coach to say, All right, this is my mentality, this is my game plan, this is what this this is my theory of offense. No, he's telling you right now, we're gonna be physical front and we're going to run all day on offense and we ain't going to allow them to know what we're going to do. If we need to run 80 times in the game, we need to be prepared to do that. If we need to pass 80 times in the game. We need to be flexible and, and, and able to get that done. So I like the fact that he he demanding the best out of uh, Terry McLaurin. That lets the bottom man on the roster know he sure got to step in line. So I think what he's doing is, think about it, we haven't been good on offense here for a long time. Okay. So whatever so whatever we've been doing ain't worked. Right. I, it ain't work. So, yes, they're going to have to adjust to this newness of a new philosophy of somebody that got a new eager and a new energy for his offense and a new expectation. And that's what I love. He's he putting the bar high, even though we got to understand and be realistic, Kyle. This is his first year here. We know right. sometimes it takes offenses right. a while right. to really get going. That's why I'm not all up in arms because defense is killing him, because usually – we always killing them this time of year. Right. That's nothing new. But people going to have to be patient and let him install it because this is Sam Howe first time playing his offense. Terry McLaurin first time playing in his offense. Like everybody has to get used to what he called and they got to get used to what he wants from them. So patience is what it's going to take. And I agree with that. I don't think even when they was hired, like I would, kept, I would say that, that you have a young quarterback, you're going to have a lot of new linemen it takes time to implement and to get it going. You just want to see progress and improvement. Yeah. Do you think when, um, cause you were here with Marty too, right? Yes. That's who drafted yes. me. Yeah. Right. So that's right. I forgot. So that year you guys are on five and yeah. he was working your asses off. Yes, he remember, was. That training camp was really hard. So you're on five. I remember a lot of players being ready to mutiny. Like but yeah. then you turned, then it turned. But like, do you mm -hmm. remember? Do you remember that? I remember that year. It's my rookie year. Yes. So listen, we we was in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and we he, he bent us to his will. And I think it took us not a couple of games to know what he wanted to do on offense and defense. More, we just we had to build our bodies back up and get ready for the long haul. But yeah, it was just relentless. And coach, 
Schottenheimer was relentless. I love Coach Schottenheimer because he was making means of us. And the people that was kind of nagging was the older guys. It's usually always going to be the older guys because they've been successful doing things one way. And here come this telling the new guy in here telling us we're going to do it the other way. But I don't think we had to be as patient as we had to be then because we was dealing with Jeff George at quarterback and we ended up having Tony Banks finish right. the year. So at the end of the day, I think with Sam Howe and which coach be enemy, it's the perfect storm. And when I say it's the perfect storm, it's the perfect storm for us to start out fast because now for the first five teams that got to play us the first month of the year, they have no film to study. They're going to go and they're going to study Kansas City. That's who they're going to study, but they study in Pat Mahomes, first of all, and they study in a, a playbook that they don't know which part we're going to take out and which part we're going to keep. So unpredictability is going to be our ultimate weapon on offense, and we got that twice. We got that unpredictability by uh, Eric B. in his playbook because nobody knows what it looks like. We got unpredictability at the quarterback. Sam Howe, they got one game to study, and that's against the Cowboys. That ain't much. So at the end of the day, because they don't know, because of the unknown, that gives us a chance to start quick, and that gives us a chance to jump out on people, especially with this defense, and especially, and I really do mean this, with Tress Way. With a potent defense and a potent partner like that, you're talking about weapons that allow Sam Howe to get going and, and, and make it safe for him, especially early. Yeah, and, and that's what I was going to ask you, because to me, this camp has been better yeah. than what they've had. Oh. And, oh, no, and it, I, it's because of the offense. The defense people doing what the defense does. Jack, Coach Del Rio is doing what Coach Del Rio does. There's nothing different. Right, it's the tempo of the offense. It's, it's the individual drills. Even when I watch them, the, the small things like doing two-on-two -two instead of one-on-one. -on -one. I tell people all the time, one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback and receiver is not realistic. All right? Right. Not realistic. All right? It's just something about it. Now, you put two people over there. Now, I get to pattern read. Now, I get to be situational. You can hear him sometime when they doing two on two it's third and seven he letting them know in their head if the if the route is supposed to be five it's third and seven you need to take that to seven yards or seven and a half so these are the situational things that i'm really loving in practice and just some of the drills are very unorthodox some of them are very different and i'm sure the players are, are happening to adjust to that so i, I think he does in real time what he's going to do in the game. Like, he, he don't waste practice. Uh, he makes it to where whatever we're going to do in the game, we will practice it 150 times before we even win it one time in the game. Right, and players talk, like Antonio Gibson said, he's in his best shape that he's ever been in. And Logan Thomas was talking about this, I think it was last week, where he's yeah. like, you know, this gets you ready for the fourth quarter of games. The way the tempo they play at, they're, they're practicing yeah. at. And so, you know, you see that, but it's also, Fred, a lot more situational work. It feels like yeah. this summer than mm -hmm. in the past and not just the past couple of years, but for a while. Situational football is the only football. Every time we line up, it's a situation. Uh, if it's first and 10 situation, third and three situation, red zone, goal zone situations. If you're not practicing situations, you're not practicing to win the game. And that's what I did really enjoy for playing for Greg Williams. I, I enjoyed it so much. I left and came back. Right, so at the end of the day, I enjoyed playing it so much because we used to game plan to take away routes. Like he was one of the few coordinators that I I I I played for that he was like, we're gonna intercept this route, we're gonna intercept this route, and we're gonna intercept this route. It's gonna be doing a, a third to three to seven. Like it's planned. We're planning how we're gonna turn the ball over, and that's the detail that I think we're getting over so uh, over there now. So I, I think it's just so similar the more and more I watch. Yeah, no, and and you know my big thing for for the offense too has been they're not game planning, they're not, you know, it's it's you're not able to slow the D line with a lot of hesitation stuff. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. it can be hard to get a good great read. That's why I'm looking forward to the Cleveland, not just the Cleveland game, but those joint practices with the yeah. Ravens. I think going to tell yeah. a lot. That's going to tell everything. I love practice against the Ravens because, you know, top of the line franchise. And the thing about it is, you know, they're going to have players all over the field. So we'll see a lot there. But, yeah, not only the screen game helps the offensive linemen. If they get beat, that's what West yeah. Coast teams do. They go to the, the, the screen game and they screen to every player, tight end, running oh, back. Wide everybody. Receiver. 
Everybody's involved in the screen game. All right, sometimes you'll see him push the offensive line and they'll push all push left because he got them rolling. Like it's certain thing. He'll move the pocket. If he feels like it's a DN that's on the right, that's killing him. He will move the pocket. These are the things coordinators do. Mm-hmm. Like they, they are ready for situations. And that's what coach B enemy is. He practice situations. So when he's out there practicing and let's just say Montez sweat is having one of those days, he's doing plays saying the left defensive end is killing me. What can I do to slow him down? And that's why you see a lot of children with the running back. A lot of chips and come out late with the tight end. That also bends the zone. Anytime you let these guys out with hesitation, it bends the zone. Uh, if it's man, it's show much. The, the, the linebacker will show say, All right, my guy blocking, I'm finna go get the quarterback. So these type things, I think stretch the field in, in, in organic ways instead of uh, planned ways with play calling. No, I, I agree. And I do like the way they use a screen, screen game because you're right. I have seen every player, I think, on offense catch a screen pass of, in some fashion. And sometimes it's like a receiver in a screen set situation that usually might be for a running back or something like that. Yeah. And so, you know, and so I, I, I really kind of enjoy that. But it's also the precision they run the screens at and how, you know, you've got to be right here. You can't be up here because you are going to blow this all up. And not that other coaches aren't detailed or disciplined. I just think you see more adherence to that. What about like defensively? You, who, 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 who? Some of the guys that stand out because your defensive yeah. backs to me say yeah. Juice is at a really good camp. Yes, what, what, yeah. what you thought about that group. Yeah, first of all, I call him the Pope. The Pope St. Juice. It, it, he looked like he looked like he in his bag. He looked like he has made it to a point where everything has slowed down to him. All right, nothing's moving fast. He 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 doesn't look panicky anymore. Mm-hmm. He's always been one of them people like Carlos Rogers, always gonna be in the right good mm-hmm. position. He's always been that guy, but you can tell this offseason, he focused on let me get my hands on the ball because turnovers get DBs paid. Carlos right, didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 but guess what? I told y'all Carlos needed LASIKs, and when he got LASIKs, that's he right. went to the Pro Bowl. That's so right. like, that's maybe right. I should listen to Dr. Fred Smoot <laughs> right? so that guy. Right. I think I think St. Juice, very similar in that way, got a knack for being around the ball, but don't yeah. complete the play. Now he's starting in this camp, he's completing the play. And I think it might have a little bit to do with the fact that your team drafted two corners in the first two rounds of the draft. You know, nothing like a uh, healthy competition to really make you focus in and understand what the task at hand is. I think Emmanuel Forbes has shown that he belonged in the league. Yeah. Now the big question with him is understanding how good can he be? Because I think he can be good. I think sky's the limit. You know, I don't really got to say anything more about Emmanuel Forbes. He just needs to stay healthy and continue to learn the game because he's going on to get better and better. Now, I'm going to tell you who's really looked good to me. Cam Curl just, he's so steady that we don't appreciate his steady. Yeah, yeah, he's so steady that we don't appreciate his leadership. Uh, He's he's that he's that piece that you don't appreciate until you the left or the right corner. Uh, He he that piece that you don't appreciate until you the defensive coordinator and he comes up and he's out the game because he's hurt. All right, so Cam Curl, I thought I thought I thought he looks good. Kendall Fuller, constant pro, he looks good. The back end, I think they're gonna have one of them years, kind with this front like. Like, I've had, think about my defensive backfield with me and Sean Taylor, LaRon Landry, Sean Springs, uh, Walt Harris. What If we had a defensive line like this, I would have never backpedaled. I'm not backpedaling. <laughs> I, I, I understand that you got to get the ball out quick. I understand that you can only double move me, but won't be no intermediate routes. I'm not practicing for that. Like this front and this back end going to help each other because that back end going to hold them for a tenth or two, three tenths of a second longer, giving them chances. So now Montez Sweat, nine sacks, turn into 18 because that's how much he's around the quarterback. So they work hand in hand, and I think they're going to really benefit from this front. And, I, and I'm going to tell people like this, this front, could be nine, 11 people deep. They're going to have to cut some good players. Oh, I'm sorry. They're, they're cutting somebody. Like, I, the, the Andre Jones kid, the seventh round pick, I've seen him. He's flashed. You know, I'm yeah. curious to see how he does. And, you know, then you also have the fifth round pick, KJ Henry. There's yep. I mean, Benning Potwe. Like, they like him. And I don't know if you can keep him. So they're going to be somebody that they, yeah, I agree. But with, let me ask you too, with the defensive back here, because one of the things that has really jumped out to me, I think they're a smart group. And you see the ability to disguise. So yeah. you guys could do that. So mm-hmm. how important, because you talk about getting the quarterback to hold an extra three times. That's also how you do it by just yeah. pulling them for a little bit. 
do you see them doing that a lot? And is that something you think could be a big part of their game? They are great quarterback manipulators. That's what we call it. Got to manipulate the quarterback. Uh, you got you can't let him come out and know where he's going to go with the ball before the snap. So you got to move late. You got to move suddenly. You got to know where your soft spots at when you when you're not in the right spot by the snap of the ball from trying to hold it too long. And the, the natural thing I see them doing is they're communicating so good and they're understanding and they're what we call them rocking and rolling and they're so interchangeable. Because, yeah. see, the bars can go down and play yeah. the strong safety just like Cam can. So when they rock and rolling like that, it's already hard for you to understand are we in zone or are we in man. Now you mix that in a pot with the fact that we do like to play a lot of match coverage that looks like man and mimic zone, yeah. and we also have a front that makes you say, I have to make decisions quickly. And by making decisions quickly is why they keep moving like that. Yes, Sam Howell is going to throw it into spots he should. There's like a lot of more quarterbacks for 17 games this year going to throw it a lot of places they should. And I think that has a lot to do with Cameron Curl and the rest of them guys all being on the same page. It will save you individually, and it will save you as a group. If the back end is on the same page, it, it, it stops all the big plays. And they've been a good defense. Let's not yes. talk. I mean, we're not talking like a top five defense. No, like they good. Defense. This allows them to be great. This allows them to be the reason we win. Like, you know, it's going to be some games that I think this defense is going to take over the game that we we don't even know how good our offensive is. I think this defense has a chance to be that special. I really do. I And, you know, it's funny because you talk about, like, the zone match and how they play things, and there have yeah. been a number of times where you see them, it's like, that looks like press man. And then they're able to hold it. And it's like one time I even saw St. Juice kind of, like, fake a jam at Terry and Terry's got to change his release because of it. But by changing his release, it allows St. Juice to then, yeah. you know, he's got to go and take, he took a wide release. Yeah. So St. Juice takes an angle and takes him out. Yeah. Or the other thing is what, here's where the chess match comes in, in, in during practices where you watch like a couple of times, how got them to jump with the hard count where he got him yeah. to reveal well, like, okay, like Forbes is up here. It looks like press. Now he's opening up. Okay. Now you got this. Yeah. And, but, but that's, but they, but I feel like the D backs do that really well. And that's, and again, I, you know, and, and I like watching them because of that, but is there, is there, what's a big, do you have a big concern or big question still after a few weeks of camp? I really don't. I, I, I like, I told people last year this team was a talented team because this team won in spite of. All right, when you win in in spite of, which we had to do most of my career, that means you got a good team of functioning guys. All you need to do is find that brain trust in the offense coordinator and find a trigger man and find you a quarterback. And I think we got better. I think he's better than Heineke. I think he's, I know he's better than Wentz. All right. So at the end of the day, I think we brought in Nick Gates. That's going to help on the offensive line. I think uh, we already had the wide receiver room to me is one of the better wide receiver rooms in the NFL. Very versatile, very skilled. And we don't get enough props for our running back room. I think I a like Brian Robinson. Those, I like those two. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think they're good. And, and, and B Rob is going to showcase get to showcase something Thank different to good. We're catching out the backfield, which he always could do. They just never threw him the ball. So I think they're going to get a chance to be special on offense, especially because the defense is going to one, give them some short fields. Three, get a lot of three and outs. Four, make sure this kid is protected. And that's what I think they got a chance to do. I like Brian Robinson a lot. I think his hands are very good. His only the only issue with his hands is when he sometimes occasionally turns up too soon. But he yeah. I think otherwise he catches it. It's not an issue with his hands. He catches really well. Speaking of Nick Gates, like why is it that centers or offensive linemen, like he's showing his gut every practice? Yes. The, we, we the, like guys, the guys with great abs aren't doing yeah. that. We love the big nasties when they do that because it sets a visual tone. It is the <laughs> we are nasty, filthy dog. We are the hogs. It, it, it's like it's it, it's one of the things where when we see it as football players, we look at it as tough bravado. I don't care about this gut. 
I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm, I, and then you know Nick Gates spiced it too. So that's what I love about him. He ain't scared to mix it, up, mix it up, and he done already proved without our fans even wondering that he can play in this division. He didn't play it against Payne and Allen. He didn't play it against the Eagles. He didn't play it against uh, everybody, the Cowboys. So he ain't new to this. So he will be ready to go. And I just think that the mixture of the guys that we brought in, we are a better team. I think we can all agree we are a better team right now than we were a year ago. And if you tell me we're two games better than a year ago, ain't we looking at 10 wins? Yeah. Listen, this is a better camp than they've had. And you that you always have to take that into account. And I was telling someone yesterday that, you know, even when you were playing, when back, you know, the Gibbs there and all that, there were a couple of years where like this team worked harder than what their record is right now. And then you guys yeah. rattled off six, seven wins in a row or whatever. And I, I think this team, the way they're working is better. And I always yeah. like, I always kind of start with that because there were other years where, you know, it was the year before you got here and it was the Mar it was the North Turner second year when they bring in, they bring in Dion and they have yeah. Bruce Smith and they have all this. And it was like, they all were like, you know, Hey, yeah, we're great. We know it. We're going to in, I mean, just the way they practice, that was it. Right. They yeah. practice as if they were great. Whereas mm -hmm. this team, I, I like the purpose that they practice with. And I think that helps. So, you know, we'll see. And then you got to be get the good quarterback play. And, that, and the fact that they all suffering from the, the uh, Roger Dangerfield, kind of like no respect kind of thing. Nobody ever gave us respect because they just, you know, Washington had, you know, black cloud over it. So nobody respects us. And these, these, team that the, the players feel that they not only feel that and that's why i love it for these kids that they get to see the fans in the stands you know it was still hype like this when i got here in 01 right. it, was, it was crazy like people yeah. could drive into pennsylvania you know pennsylvania was yeah. packed so i'm just glad Harry McLaurin, John Allen get to experience what it feels like to be a real washington football player like this is the this is how it really feels yeah, no, I, I think it's been great having them back. It's even for us, it's like it, it you know, when when they're not there, there's, when there was just a few there, there's no energy. And when yeah. there are a lot there, there's a lot of energy. Last thing then, going back to the whole, you know, and it just kind of popped up because when you talk about the Rodney Dangerfield stuff, that's why I want to go back to this. But after what Ron said, you had a lot of, you know, you had some national types saying, hey, you know, are the are players soft? And that's always a bad mm. word to call a football player. And yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah. do it because like <laughs> a soft, a soft NFL player is going to flat me like a, a leg on a windshield, right? So, but does that, can that kind of stuff galvanize? You know, if, if you, if you hear that, does it yeah. put a chip on your shoulder? Does it, or is it, is that just like a stretch? I think it's static noise. I think it, there's just static noise right now uh, in the preseason right now, you got better things on your mind. One, making the team, making it 53. It's not promised for a lot of guys to try to establish and, 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 and get into, well, you got a new office coordinator, so you need to get into his graces because he ain't married to none of y'all, all right? <laughs> and the fact that we got a couple of guys uh, uh, on contract years from Cameron Curl to, to Sweat to Chase Young, like it's a, it's a lot of prove it in this room. It's a lot of different motives to why guys want to give their best this year. A guy like Ron Payne wants to prove I am worth the money. All right? a, a guy like John Alley wants to prove I do I do have the staying power to play at the level that I'm playing with and, and, and could keep ascending. So uh, Terry McWane wants to say thank you for this money. Let me show you why I'm worth it. All right? So at the end of the day, it's good. different guys playing for different reasons. I think it's, it's all going to come together for some controlled chaos, organized chaos is what oh that's a greg william turn he yeah. used to always say that we want to be organized chaos yeah and and you guys were but yeah i always enjoyed the, his practices anyway fred you're always worth the money so i appreciate you joining me and always great insight it's it's entertaining man thank you very much and, 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 and I, I don't want to just say entertaining you're fun yeah. to hear but you have good insight and that's why i like it too so thank you very much anytime Cam. anytime bro all right Thanks to Fred for joining me, and thank you, as always, for tuning in. I'll be back Thursday, Friday morning, with another podcast, again, with Sam Fortier from The Washington Post, Matthew Paris, Washington Times, Pete Haley, formerly of NBC Sports Washington, and then again, Saturday morning, with a podcast about the first preseason game. Talk to you next time.